Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is John Ray. Srinivas and I work for Intel. Today, we will talk about the Intel low power mode daemon on hybrid CPUs. In this talk, we will first introduce the concept of low power mode on hybrid CPUs, and then the Intel low power mode daemon we implemented. And in the end, we will talk about the challenges we have. Some of the challenges already have solutions, but we haven't get them upstream yet. Some of them are still open questions. And the comments are welcome. Okay, some uh, background. On Intel hybrid platforms, there are multiple CPU types within the same processor, and different CPUs have different power efficiencies. So in some scenarios, if we, we, if we run tasks on the side of most power efficient CPUs only and leave the other CPUs idle, power save can be achieved. This is what we call low power mode in this talk. On Intel hybrid platforms like Adelic and Replic, these CPUs can be eco CPUs. And on Intel's latest hybrid platform named Meteor Lake, we can even get a non-linear power saving because of its hardware design. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. Compared with previous hybrid platform like Adelic and Replic, which have P cores and E cores, Media Lake has three types of CPUs. P cores, performance core, E cores, and efficiency cores, and L cores, the low power E cores. P call and E call are located in the compute die, while the low power E call, the L calls, are located in a separate die named SOC die. Then, in scenarios like local video playback or some other partial idle workload that can fit in the capacity of the L calls, if we place tasks on these L calls and keep the SOC die active, the whole compute die are all idle, and the whole computer can reach a low power state named DC6. And in our measurement, we do get power gains by doing this. For this purpose, we implemented a user space tool named Intel Low Power. The tool has been released in GitHub in the link here. As shown in this diagram, on the left, for the blue boxes, it reads the proc state to get the system utilization and CPU utilization. It also takes formula hints from the kernel Intel HFI driver, and it also takes input from other user space applications like ThermoD and GNOME power setting. And based on this information, it makes decision to enter or exit the low power mode. In low power mode, to keep the other CPUs in a quiescent state, we need to migrate IRQs and tasks to the low power CPUs as shown in the bo boxes on the right. For IRQ placement, when IRQ balance is running, we talk to IRQ balance via socket message. And when IRQ balance is not running, we program the proc IRQ files directly. For task placement, we leverage C group to do this. We'll give more details in the next slide. Yeah, as we know, C group CPU set controller allows restricting tasks to certain CPUs. In Intel low power mode daemon, we support two different solutions. The first one is to change the C system D C group CPU size to lower uh, to low power CPUs. This helps running uh, restricting the user space tasks running on these CPUs. The second solution is to create a C group isolated position and isolate the CPUs that should stay idle in low, low in low power mode. In our experiments, the C group isolated position is a better choice because. The other CPUs are more quiescent with no kernel threading running. But still, there are some challenges. Okay, the first problem we found is that 
When in low power mode, the isolated CPUs are idle. But scheduler still treats these CPUs as ordinary idle CPUs and use them for idle load balance. This is a waste of power because the isolated CPUs are detached from any scale domains. So they are just wake up from idle, find nothing to do, and go to idle again. In our experiments, we see that the isolated CPUs are woke up around 3,000 times in a 60 seconds run. I have posted a simple fix, simple patch to fix this. The idea is that when do idle load balance, ignore any CPUs with no scale domain attached, which, and this, this covers the CPUs in isolated, uh, isolated partition case. So the, currently, uh, there are some discussions about this patch, but we haven't pushed this to upstream yet. The second problem is that we do observe some unbound work queues run on CPUs in isolated position. And good news is that I happened to find a patch site from Wyman Long when I was writing this slide. It seems to address exactly the same issue. I have just confirmed that the problem is gone with this patch site on top of latest upstream kernel. The third problem is that Srinivas uh, observed that timers fail on the CPUs in the isolated position. And for this issue, the timer patch series from Anna helps because the timer can be pulled by the low power CPUs then. Besides the challenges we had with C group isolated partition, there is another problem. Intel low power daemon detects the low power CPUs automatically. Say it chose four E calls in one E call module on Ad Lake on, and on uh, Rap Lake. But on Media Lake, we have troubles detecting the L calls. As shown in this uh, in the slide, Yes, as shown in this slide, the most of straightforward way to detect the L calls is to check the cache topology because L call does not have L3. However, current kernel cannot handle asymmetric cache topology and the cache CCFS is missing on Media Lake. Ricardo has a patch theory to fix this, but this has not been upstream yet. Okay, so the Intel low power daemon put the system into low power mode to save power, but at the same time, it must exit the low power mode in time when the task don't fit the capacity of the low power CPUs. And this is for performance concerns. So response time is also critical. The first challenge is that as we monitor the system and CPU utilization to make the enter and exit low power mode decisions, this is, the, this is done by pulling the proc state. There are some firmware hints, but they are mostly tuned for Windows. So we are wondering if it's reason, reasonable to have something like utilization threshold and deliver an event to user space when the utilization is changed. The second problem is that for IQ placement, talking with IQ balance via socket message takes time. It may even take hundreds of milliseconds to finish, longer than everything else we do during this low power mode state transition. And when IQ balance is not running, we need to handle a large number of IQ proc FS entries, and this also takes time. So we are thinking if there is a smart, way, a smart way to do this, say, is it possible for C group isolate partition handle IQ at the same time? Yes, this, uh, this, is, a, uh, this is a main uh, slides I'd like to talk today. There are some backup slides, but uh, I won't talk about them given the limited time. Yeah, and questions? 
Vincent. I have a question. Can you guys hear me? Sure. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so, so you you're doing this on Intel hybrid machines, right? You have a uh -huh. performance and efficient CPUs. So, is, isn't it about time that you guys try uh, capacity aware scheduling, enable the uh, CPU asymmetric capacity feature? So, give like your efficient CPUs a little bit less of capacity and 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 and, and do the CFS wake up through the uh, capacity aware scheduling path. I'm not I'm not talking about energy aware scheduling because you guys don't have yes. Um, Peace. Your question uh, is clear. Your question is clear, and the answer yeah. is no. Okay, and, and the answer is no. Uh, and the reason the answer is no is not because of hybrid, it's because of turbo, and it's because of mm -hmm. hardware P states. The way our hardware okay. works is we don't know what the capacity is in software, it's done in hardware. Okay, but isn't this related to what, what Vincent just did to, to have like a, a common single? Uh, capacity reference. I think he was highlighting the fact that we have to have it because of stuff, for instance, like turbo states in x86. And, and like I said, I, I'm not talking about energy aware scheduling, where you need an energy model with uh, different OPPs. I'm talking right. About We're talking strictly capacity, not energy model. Exactly. Uh, energy model is a whole other disaster, right? True. The first disaster is capacity, and, and it's more important. Okay. Um, so, say on Alder Lake, uh, which is shipping today, we get Alder Lakes with the max guaranteed frequency is 800 megahertz, and the max turbo frequency is five gigahertz. So you can know your capacity is 800 megahertz, but it might be five gigahertz. That's a big difference. Um, and the only way we can really know what the capacity is is if we measure it at runtime and we run out of capacity. So you could say, hey, great, at this moment, I've got no idle time. I'm running at two gigahertz. So my capacity is two gigahertz. But milliseconds after that, or even microseconds, it could be something completely different. And it's not up to that CPU. It's up to a microcontroller, which is which is marshalling the resources that are available to all the processors in the package. And it happens too fast for the software to track. This is That's why we have a really difficult time okay. with Linux's concept of CPU capacity uh, on our hardware. Okay. It, it's, it's related also to Turbo, Turbo 3, where you when you run on Turbo level, then you, only some of the CPU can run or only one CPU can run. Is this the case? And um, because this is also would also not work then. So the there's that... there's five things that govern the frequency of an Intel processor and how much frequency you get. One of them is what you're referring to, which we call the turbo ratio limit, which says, hey, if you've got one processor, you can do this. If you've got two, you can do another. But there's also very importantly uh, average power. Um, there's temperature. And there's current. We can't even see current. Um, and there's something else that I can't remember. And you know, we have at best only one of a handle on only one of the on only one of them. We don't have the other four. Yeah. Uh, anyway, okay. so we, we ran out of time for this topic. And uh, good question, though. But but the, yeah, it's Thanks. a good question, and, and we can we can uh, talk about it. Uh, you know, uh, later. Uh, or discuss it in a, by email. Uh, so we need to switch over to the next topic now. Thank you. Thank you, Ori. Uh, thanks for the discussion.